sort of put a, a big word across the top of the rubric or across the top of your brain <laughs> if you just want to do it internally. But it says, this is primarily about information or this piece is primarily about descriptive language or this mm -hmm. piece is primarily about personal response. Um, we do a lot of calling for personal response papers in our cinema studies for literature learning yeah. guides. And these are lit analysis guides that are designed for kids who maybe are slower readers. So mm -hmm. they get bogged down and overwhelmed with books, but it's, it's a way to practice literary analysis skills using the medium of watching a movie. And most of those then have a suggested writing assignment. It's not writing instruction, it's a writing mm -hmm. prompt. Mm -hmm. And we give them the option of an essay or a personal response paper. And I've had a lot of moms say, okay, so if I give them the personal response paper, how can I grade that? It's going to be whatever their response was, you know, like, mm -hmm. And I say, oh, no, 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 no. Actually, a personal response is a really important piece of writing because mm -hmm. that is communicating something that no one else can say for you. This is not a right or wrong. It's not like a math quiz. There's not a right or wrong answer. But if they're going to respond to um, the idea of, uh, I don't know, I'm I can't think of a single movie that I've ever written a cinema studies guide for at the moment. <laughs> perspective, Apollo 13, there we go. If they're yeah. gonna think about the idea of the perspective and the, we have the perspective of the astronauts who are stuck up in this, in this um, mm -hmm. capsule in space. And then we have the perspective of the people on the ground. And we've asked them to look at perspective all the way through the movie as they've analyzed it. Now we say personal response. If you were one of the people on the ground, or if you were one of the astronauts, I think, you know, give, give your, how do you think the um, unique circumstances would have affected your perspective on what was going on in this many days of crisis? Well, it's not enough to just say, I would have been upset, I guess. <laughs> you know, I mean, I guess that is a personal response, but that's not a personal response paper. Right. Right. So we can coach our kids to say, look, you're the only one who can tell us what that felt like inside your head and your heart mm -hmm. and your body, even encourage them to bring the reader into what their experience was, because that's what they're responding to. They're responding to their own experience. And that right there, oh my goodness, is an exercise in understanding other people and in growing in empathy and in being able to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes and imagine it from their perspective, right? So when we, when we have our kids write a personal response paper, our primary goal is how much did you bring your reader into your experience? Did you give them ways to understand you and to walk a mile in your shoes? And if you didn't, could you, could you give another mm -hmm. example? Could you tell me about, you said it was really stressful. Could you tell me what your stomach felt like when you were watching it? What your jaw felt like? Could you tell me what it felt like in your body even when you were watching it? What, it, what was stressful about it? Did you hold your breath? You know, those kinds of things. We're, we're helping our kids not just express, this is how I felt, but to bring somebody else into their experience and share it with them. So in it, that's, that's one very specific example. But in all of these, in all of these different types of writing that we give our kids, we need to have that big word written across the front of our brains or across the top of our rubric that my, my primary goal in having my kid write this is I want them to practice this in communication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want them to give me information very clearly and let me know where I can find the proof to back it up. That's a research paper, right? Mm -hmm. I want them to put their, um, position on this issue out there in words that are very easy. I don't have any question where they come down on this issue. And in fact, I didn't agree with them when I started reading it, but I'm starting to be persuaded by the end of the paper. You know, that's a persuasive essay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so in all these things, ask yourself, what is that? What is that primary goal? And then from there, you can get into some of the nitty gritty. Um, if you have a kid who really is struggling with grammar and punctuation, um, don't beat them up with a red pen on every writing assignment all year long. Mm -hmm. That is so disheartening for kids. It's not mm -hmm. that grammar doesn't matter. It matters so much. And, and if you need a resource, Grammar Granules by Allison yes. Thorpe, available at sevensistershomeschool.com. It's a wonderful pocketbook resource. Yes. Sorry, um, shameless plug. I think yes. it's a great, a great it is little a resource. Great resource, yes. Um, but if, if we can pull some of that grammar work out and 
let our kids have some of their writing assignments where they don't lose 20 points because mm -hmm. their grammar wasn't very good, um, where instead they only lose five because the main thing that they were being graded on for this assignment was the, the content, the ideas in it, the descriptions given, the um, figurative language used, the whatever, use of example. So there can be all sorts of other things. And you can decide for this paper, you're going to have a chance to do four revisions. You better have the spelling and the grammar and the punctuation correct by the time you turn it in. Yes. But for another assignment, you might say, I really want this one to be more creative. I want it to mm -hmm. be more personal. I want you to get in touch with dialogue um, because you're doing storytelling here, you know, those kinds of things where then you can say, I'm only going to take a total of five points off, even mm -hmm. if there are 30 spelling errors in it. I'm not going to, I'm not going to beat yeah. you up on the spelling for this one. And you get to make those choices. That is that subjective. Yeah, it is. We're, we're homeschooling. That's okay. Yeah, <laughs> we're homeschooling. Right, right. A subjective educational experience is one of the main reasons we're homeschooling, yeah. right? <laughs> well, and, and the beauty of that is, is there's not one right way. And so there, for one assignment, you may have a priority of, let's just get your ideas captured and refined. And so the grammar is not going to be the, the big focal point. On a research paper, you know, they will probably have several revisions. And mm -hmm. so the first revision, you know, you got a, a chance to go back and fix those things and just keep working on it until you have this sparkling paper. A senior, you would expect more out of than a Absolutely. freshman. And so that, you know, teens need to know, could I make a suggestion oh, as, yes, while you were talking? Is that, that moms make sure that the teens, if you're using a rubric, have a copy of the rubric crazy yeah do you remember like uh, i don't know you're so much younger than me but when i was uh, in high school or, or college they never gave us rubrics never never and so you were just shooting in the dark and hoping mm -hmm. you could read the professor oh and you were talking to other students who had had that teacher before to find yeah. out so what what is this one looking for yeah when you write you know yeah because yeah you were you were totally shooting in the dark and when i first um began getting near the end of middle school and starting into high school with homeschooling my kids. And I started realizing that there were a lot of the moms who were giving their kid the rubric. And I, I kept thinking, is that, cheating? is that cheating? I don't know. Is that cheating? <laughs> I mean, it's so silly. It's yes. absolutely not cheating. It's giving good instruction on what the yes. assignment is. The specifics it clarifies of the assignment. like teens yes. can look at their writing they can they can do a rough draft however they want but then they can take that rubric and say am i meeting the expectations yes. and what do i need to do in order to meet those expectations like that is just only fair but it's also not wasting your time or your teen's time with yeah. them shooting in the dark exactly exactly yeah and for example i remember in our local community i taught a um, professional writing class. And one of the things that we did was a cover letter mm -hmm. for a job application. And I'm telling you what, a single typo, a single punctuation mm -hmm. error, a single anything. I not only took points off, I gave it back to the student and said, you either get a zero for this or you redo it. It mm -hmm. has to be perfect. Mm -hmm. Because when you're applying for a job or, you know, a fellowship or an internship or any mm -hmm. of those things, you cannot be you careless at all. You get yep. one shot and you are selling yourself with mm -hmm. that piece of writing. And you're saying, mm -hmm. I am diligent and hardworking and I pay attention to detail. Mm -hmm. So your cover letter has to show diligence and hard work and attention mm -hmm. to detail. And you either get a zero or you get a hundred, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I don't, I didn't do that with very many writing assignments, but for that particular one, we talked mm -hmm. about it and they all knew and they got you know, unlimited chances to do it right, as long as they were willing to keep working on it. Yeah. But to, um, to have that, that type of um, that rubric in your, you know, right in front of you where, you know, okay, well, this one, mm -hmm. this one mm -hmm. has to be. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, it's good communication with our kids when we, when we let them write to the rubric. Yes. And uh, yeah, not cheating for sure. Not cheating. Let's see. What else can we do that's going to encourage? Oh, the moms who say, I'm not a good writer mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. I struggle with writing and I don't even know if I'm grading the grammar correctly or if um, 
the paragraphs really are communicating what they're supposed to, you know, I don't know if it's kind of wandering and rambling because I wander and ramble every time I try to communicate <laughs> or write. Yes. So this is going to be a little, a little bit out there. You can improve. Mm -hmm. You can, you can practice and you can get better and you can mm -hmm. use tools and that will definitely help. But you could also just, also just make friends with somebody who is more confident as a writer mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Maybe they could grade some of your kids' papers and mm -hmm. in exchange, you could do something that you're good at with their kids because mm -hmm. cooperative work in community among homeschoolers, it's really good for everybody involved. Yeah. We make such good friends. We do. Like seven sisters. Yes. We have to like get somebody else to do the hard things for us. So mm -hmm. then we can switch off on other things. Yeah. And another tool um, is Grammarly. Oh yeah. So moms can get Grammarly and, um, and let Grammarly give them some suggestions mm -hmm. on how that paper might be improved when you're By the way, we are not it. affiliates. We are just fans of utilizing whatever resources are going to be yes. helpful in your homeschooling yeah. adventures. So that's not cheating. Nope. That's just pulling in another expert. It's just a digital yep. expert. There. A digital expert. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Which stuff. I am not a digital expert. <laughs> so <we know. laughs> it can also be really helpful to enroll your kid in a short writing class. Mm -hmm. You don't have to necessarily say, oh, we're going to shell out the big bucks and we're going to mm -hmm. do an online course for the whole year. Mm -hmm. you, you can find something where um, it's just going to be a six week, an eight week, a particular type of project, whatever. But by observing how someone who really loves to teach writing, mm -hmm. how they interact with a student's um, writing assignments and how they give them feedback and then how they actually grade them. You can learn a lot by observing that. And so you could, you could do a short, fairly inexpensive um, foray into someone else teaching your kid writing and grading it, and then get a lot more confident doing the grading yourself going forward. That's awesome. Yeah. And if you still feel stuck and you want more, you can schedule a coaching session with a Big sister at sevensistershomeschool.com. Yeah. That's one of the things that, that we offer when we have coaching clients who come and say, I just need to talk through some of this stuff because writing is where we're really stuck in our homeschool. Yeah. So uh, yeah, don't be afraid to ask for help for sure. Absolutely. From friends, from professionals and from big sisters. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Well, thank you, Sabrina. So, end of the day, don't let writing yeah. intimidate you, even mm -hmm. if it doesn't come naturally to you or your kid. It's yeah. it's okay for everybody to be learning, right? Yeah. Isn't that something to do with the growth mindset, which is another whole episode? But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, and it, it's like as our as our teens are developing those communication skills, we moms develop them more and more. Like I'm a better writer on things because I had five kids. <laughs> 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 we had to get through high school. So, you know, Absolutely. that's, it's helped fine tune my skills too. Yeah. Yeah. Same here. And we hope that that will be the case for you as well. Seventh sisters who are listening and we are glad that you were listening today and we hope that you will decide to listen again to future episodes of the homeschool high school podcast from seven sisters, homeschool.com and brought to you by the ultimate homeschool podcast network till next time. Resume. Hello, homeschool friends, and welcome to this episode of the Homeschool High School Podcast.